Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, today, I will um, give you just uh, present some of the findings from the evaluation of the labor-intensive cash for work programs. It mainly target rural areas with some operations in urban areas. I will just first give you a, a snapshot about the social fund for development. Uh, it is now considered the largest national program, development program in the country. Uh, last year, uh, SFD disbursed around 160 million US dollar. Uh, we are expecting uh, 2014 to disperse above the 200 million US dollar. It was established in um, um, it was established in 1997. It's a government program, but it was it was established with the support of the World Bank and other uh, international and regional uh, donors. Uh, in its law of establishment, it was granted abroad mandates and it's offering multi-sectoral demand-driven projects and services. Currently, it is in its fourth phase, 2011 to 2015, and the estimated uh, budget is for 1.1 billion US dollar. Uh, the, devel the development objective is to contribute to achieving the poverty reduction and development goals of Yemen by improving access to basic services, enhancing economic opportunities, and reducing the vulnerability of the poor. I'm not going too much in the slides because uh, Olivier has already uh, spoken about, about it. So as he mentioned, we had the food crisis 2007, 2008, and then the political crisis in 2011. So what was the response strategy for social fund? Even before 2000, the crisis of the uh, food price increases, social fund has an economic uh, components to increase income and uh, enhance um, um, uh, food security through uh, several projects, ex including um, a components for uh, um, increasing the rural uh, production uh, uh, production uh, through the Rainfed Agriculture and Livestock Programs, RAL, which is financed by the World Bank and EFAD, but also we have established a microfinance uh, and institutions throughout the country, and uh, by uh, end of last year, we have about those programs that uh, offering credit and uh, non-financial services reach about 100,000 uh, active uh, microfinance clients, but also we have other schemes uh, to support uh, empl uh, generating employments and also uh, for rainwater harvesting, which is a very crucial uh, in Yemen, giving the scarcity of water. Uh, but our largest program to support uh, the food, the people, food and secure people in Yemen is the labor intensive cash for work program, which was introduced in 2008. And uh, in 2011, it became a main program with a budget of 220 million between 2011 and 2015. So the objectives of the labor intensive works program, cash for work, is to increase the resi resilience of chronic and transitory poor by providing two sets of benefits, uh, immediate wage income, but also improving uh, the community infrastructure. And the targeting mechanism, it is a community-based. So the unit of targeting is the household, is the family, not individuals. And we use two set of, uh, uh, of le two levels of uh, targeting using a national uh, data from the census of 2004 to target the villages who we are through a proxy indicators who we think that they are the most food and secure areas, but also it is confirmed by uh, field visits and then setting the wages a little bit below the market rate so it can have some self-targeting uh, elements. And the labor intensive works is designed to uh, work in two modalities, a short term uh, interventions providing about 60 days of work to a, a household and also a long-term interventions which has not been yet started and we are planning to start this year. 
This is the size until now of uh, the cash for work program, the, uh, the Yemen cash for work program. Uh, we had and we have been working in 696 uh, locations throughout Yemen in 21 governorates. <coughs> Uh, and as I mentioned, we provide two months of uh, opportunity for uh, works uh, for uh, each household uh, in the targeted uh, areas. And once we are in the in the in the in the community, everybody is invited to participate. Um, in collaboration with the University of Berkeley uh, in the USA, we had. Um, uh, designed the evaluation, the quantitative study, and the baseline was collected, um, for, uh, the baseline data was collected in 2010, so prior to the incidents of 2011, prior to the political crisis in 2011, and uh, follow up, um, the follow-up was in November, uh, December 2011. And it was based on, because, um, we managed to randomize because uh, we tried to identify projects more than what our branch offices can implement. So that, uh, and the, each branch office will come up with set of projects in bear, so we will select one for the treatment, one for the uh, control. Uh, it, it will be, become later on um, um, potential for interventions. And uh, we complement this study by qualitative visiting 12 subsample of the project locations. So, what were the findings? The, uh, the evaluation found that the labor intensive works program played an important role in cautioning uh, the effect of the economic crisis of, 2000, of 2011. Uh, we found that the participation in the program was 74% in each community visited, and we have uh, found positive impact in many ways. Uh, the program provided 51 days of employment per household. During that time, there was no prospect for job opportunities at, uh, in 2011. And we have seen that increase in rate of women employment by three percentage points. It was double the effect from the baseline level. We have seen increasing in debt repayment by $126 in out outstanding debt. We have seen also increase in calories consumptions, uh, increase in value of durable uh, goods, and also increase of, uh, of education enrollment among boys. And also 95% of the household reported that those community infrastructure are needed uh, for the community, and 74, they said they are benefiting or they are planning to benefit. And also we have seen in the water projects that uh, an increasing in water availability. So I want to give you some of um, uh, the findings of the qualitative and also some of the conditions on those communities we have visited in the evaluation. Uh, agriculture is their primary occupation, but it's not sufficient to cover their livelihood needs. So male adults has to travel to nearby towns uh, as to work as unskilled laborers for wage income. Livestock is very important to the households, mainly goat and sheep, but uh, um, uh, to, to as, as a measure of food security. Borrowing for food and other necessity is very important elements of uh, surviving, and we found that 80% of those households visited, they, are borrow they have a debt in, with, for, in the shopkeepers or in clinic and others. And illegal immigration to Saudi Arabia is very important source of uh, for their livelihoods, and each one in those communities is dreaming to cross uh, the borders. And have a quote here that it says that, I depend on God and on my hands. I work hard in anything, in Saudi Arabia, in Sana'a, or in farming. Farming is seasonal, and so is raise, uh, raising bees and animals. 
Uh, labor intensive works program is very popular among communities, but also even popular in, uh, among decision makers in the uh, different governorates. And they think that uh, the cash for work program is restoring the image of uh, the government, particularly in those days where there is no jobs, uh, no economic activities. Um, so it is, it is really, really very important program. Um, what we also find that the labor intensive works program may offer a slightly wages than the nearby towns, but by eliminating the, uh, the cost of traveling to work, it's still it's more attractive for, uh, for uh, communities. Uh, the wages are based on performance, so it's not a daily wage, it's per piece of work. And uh, women participated, but mostly in, uh, in low, in, but limited to low paid wages. And themselves, they said they have restrictions in mobility, and they want to have work closer to their homes, and also they don't have the capacity to work in constructions, which is higher paid jobs. And uh, when we asked how they spend their uh, income wages, it's in line with the, uh, with the quantitative study, uh, the vast majority they spend it on food and debt repayment. Others, they said they spent it on medical expenses and other small investments. Uh, some family reported that they purchased livestock and then later they have to sell it, so we think that it provides also an intermediate uh, protection. Um, Um, for the infrastructure, uh, most of the respondents, they said roads and water were priorities. Uh, but we know that terrace rehabilitation and uh, land clearing is technic are technically simple, and it can employ a large number of unskilled laborers, and the uh, distribution of income will be more equal. Uh, there is more equity in the redistribution of wage income. Uh, but again, people think that water and uh, and the uh, roads are more, uh, have more priority. Um, quality of infrastructure sometimes for some uh, difficult component is also a challenge. This is a story uh, based on an interview we made in uh, one district uh, in Hajja, in Yemen, uh, for workers who are uh, working with the um, SFD supported scheme. Uh, he said that um, he was working as a militant in uh, internal conflict. Then when they stopped the war in Saada, he went back to work as a guard uh, with one of the sheikh or to use them during their conflict with other tribes. But once he is participating in this work, he is now uh, having some skills in constructions and he doesn't want to go back to that, uh, to, 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 I can call it as a work in the conflict. And um, he was like, I have even a small short movie if we have like, uh, after that time we can, I can present it. And they work for a daily wage of 1,000 Yemeni real, which is about $5, and also um, with ammunition. So uh, it's just to confer confirm that um, uh, food and security can, can be a driving force uh, behind uh, civil unrest. And people don't choose to, uh, to join the militant because they have an ideological belief, or, but just for uh, livelihood necessities. What we have learned from the evaluation? Uh, we have uh, found that the treatment communities fared better than control communities in several measurable ways, which, which we ha I have mentioned in terms of calories intake, in terms of enrollment among children, and in terms of repayment of debt. In this sense, labor intensive works uh, program, the cash for work, was effective in delivering social protection, short, short to medium term food security, as was intended. Amount of transfer play a role in, to provide medium term. What we found in the quantitative study that once the transfer to the, a family is 100,000 Yemeni real or more, which is about $500, people tend to invest in either uh, livestock or other investments. 
uh, lack of rainfall, uh, limited range and weak extension and veterinary services uh, and the cost of labor limit the return from agriculture activities. Uh, wage income, therefore wage income will remain an important source of livelihood. Uh, we also found that economic necessity override cultural norms when it comes to women uh, uh, employment. So women can participate as long as there is an economic return. And always is the challenge between to balance between equity in the transfer uh, and the quality of type of works. Uh, as I said, this program is targeting communities who have no skills for constructions. And uh, what we found at the beginning is that the transfer goes to people who have uh, higher skills in constructions than people who doesn't have. And what we have tried to do is to, in one project, we try to diversify the uh, activities so we can have activities for road pavements, for uh, water tank, uh, um, uh, to build water tank and also for agricultural activities like terrace rehabilitation or uh, land so that rehabilitation so that we can have a job for everyone uh, in the community but overall what we found also that the distribution of benefits uh, progressively towards a uh, uh, poorer household So what is our planned interventions? After the learning from the evaluation, um, we think we want to go into a longer term engagement uh, rather than having this short term interventions for uh, um, two months uh, benefits for a family, we want to have a longer term um, uh, engagement to induce um, uh, impact, longer term impact. Um, in short-term engagement, because we will in, uh, continue in a short-term engagement because of ca our capacity, we cannot have a large op operations uh, in a long, uh, to intervene in a longer term. Uh, so we will try to increase the transfer to the household uh, up to $700 because we think the multiplier effects, it comes with the higher transfer. Um, we also will have uh, soon some projects that addressing food security and we will try to include in those uh, projects components for cash for work. Um, we have also uh, some uh, planned um, research which we, are, uh, we, are, we want to go back to those communities visited in the evaluation and to see the infrastructure, the community infrastructure are still like sustainable and being used or not. Uh, also nutrition, um, security is a big issue in Yemen. I mean, we have, I mean, maybe uh, Olivier mentioned about the stunting, the prevalence of uh, malnutrition and stunting in Yemen. And uh, we have two programs currently with the World Bank to address uh, nutrition. One of them is educational uh, nutrition tied to, um, it's a transfer tied to edu edu uh, educational nutrition. And so we would like to look into this programs for nutrition along with the cash for work, the long term, and to see the impact of education, health education, and also the impact of the, uh, of the transfer the uh, labor intensive works will provide a higher transfer but less intense uh, nutritional uh, education. The CCT will give a more uh, int intense edu uh, education in nutrition but a lower amount of transfer. Uh, thank you and I will leave you with some uh, pictures from the labor intensive works. Thank you.